Hey, I'm really excited to show you this week's episode. Uh, we're going to be working on what I think is the most insane truck interior ever. Show you the leather work, beautiful leather work done by Finn's Leather Shop in Morro Bay. Um, the concept of the dash. Uh, as you know, the original FC 150 interior, it was pretty sparse. It was much, not much better than a tractor. Seats are covered with washable, long-wearing vinyl coated fibers. The instrument panel is convenient and simple. Instruments and gauges are grouped in an easy to read cluster directly ahead of the driver. And uh, now we're gonna be bringing some life into this interior and um, I hope you enjoy. I'm about to do a major modification inside the cab. This uh, area here is for the heating and the air conditioning. It's going to go to this line here. Below here, I'm going to seal it all off and open up that front, uh, I don't know what you call it, the vent or cowl at the very front. I'm going to open that up so that all of the air can go straight through to the radiator from the lower part of that and then underneath the car it'll also go through. So that's something I think is going to help with the cooling of the car in case that's an issue. This is the area um, all cut out. I'm going to put a piece, which I just made, which is this piece right here, in there. Disregard, disregard this. That doesn't matter. But that's the piece that's going to be the floor and the wall. This is the part right here that's going to face the grill in the front of the Jeep. And so I'm putting some ribs down there and I'm going to paint it black. So I'm using this bead roller. Pretty easy to do. Again, I got this from Woodward Fab as well. It's a really good bead roller for, for what it costs. Just uh, set it up. It's got a long throat to it. Clamp it down. I'll try to do the same each time. And roll a nice groove in there. Just so it's not just flat metal. Yeah, so that's what it looks like when it's all been beaded. Here's a big uh, dash feature that I've just roughed in. This was the hardest thing actually I had to do on this uh, construction is try to make this uh, skull work. Uh, up here, these are the air conditioning ducts. So they're going to have these rotating uh, parts from the original Jeep in them. Um, there's a plate behind there that the skull is mounted to that mounts to the plywood dash. Um, and you can see that the only real part of the horns are these ends because the rest of them are all hollow. Then I'm going to blend it in with Bondo and do a special paint treatment and um, all the wood's going to be covered in saddle type leather. But I wanted to show you this just for the rough in of what we have. So uh, this is the skull uh, completed as far as welding and joining the actual horns. There's a actual buffalo horn on the end. This is kind of a combination of a longhorn and a uh, actually a buffalo from Bali. Um, then I made it, I made the horns longer. Those are the ducts that the um, vents, air conditioning and heater will come out of. They'll be rotating uh, round parts there. And um, welded a couple of uh, attachment points on each end. This by far was the uh, most challenging part of the whole build so far. There's a metal plate at the bottom with some uh, anchoring um, points already uh, welded in. And these things here are for the uh, AC vents. So now I'm going to uh, bondo it all up and uh, I'll show you how I'm going to uh, finish it with uh, some some um, epoxy metalized paint. So my goal here uh, with the Bondo 
is just to smooth the transitions uh, between the sections. So I'm going to put it on fairly lightly. And there it is for the most part bondoed up. So after uh, the bondo sanded, I've uh, primed the uh, skull with epoxy primer. So that's direct to metal and it adheres well to the skull. And now I've sanded it with progressive layers of uh, sandpaper using the sponge sander mostly. And now I'm going to prime it with black. Okay, here's the uh, skull primered with the black as a undercoat. It's been drying overnight. So I, I've sprayed the uh, skull and horns uh, with an epoxy paint that has uh, silver metal embedded in it. Now I'm enhancing it with uh, this stuff called metal oil. All of these products that I used for this skull are available by a company called Sculpt Nouveau. Got to wear gloves. This is like a blackened oil. I'm putting it on the skull, letting it soak in for a minute. And you can see how it enhances the, uh, the carving when you lightly buff it off. All right, we're here in Morro Bay at Finn's Leather Shop. Uh, we're going to look at the work that's being done on the interior. I'm here with my buddy Jim. I'm going to have him turn around and model some of Finn's work. So we have a motorcycle group called the Dharma Bums from Big Sur. And uh, Finn did this, uh, some of this beautiful leather work as well. So we're going to go inside and see what's going on. Just a jumble of lines and so depressions. This is some of the, uh, Finn's tools. All this work is done by hand. He's working on this uh, door panel right now. That one is tooled, and, uh, but isn't stained yet. But you can see the incredible detail he's putting into it. Is that when you tool, <laughs> you got to turn it. Uh, constantly and so the big piece means you got to have a big clear area around you yeah so this is finn himself he's hey. uh, personally working on this project and he's, he's good enough to let us come in and film him uh, yeah. doing some of the detail work here. Up. it's all hand there's We've no machine on this working through tooling the flowers what's wild is it actually changes color as you're beating it yeah, um, so about 20 minutes ago, I dampened the leather, sprayed it all down with water, and let it rest for about 15, 20 minutes. And it puts the leather in a state where it's easy to move, and when it gets hammered, it, it compresses and stays compressed. And it just happens to also darken quite a bit when you do that. Interesting. And uh, it stays been, that way. And it stays that way, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's. I think it's the pressure and the dampness does something to it. I don't know if it increases the heat or something enough to burnish the leather. So do you dye the brown as well? I know we're going to dye in between here. Everything will get dyed over, yeah. I mean, The brown gets darker too? And yeah, all over. Uh, I mean, if I have the areas that are darker now, when you if you dyed everything with a tan color, it would still be darker or tan yeah, than yeah. the other spots. Yeah, I got you. Um, oh, uh, yes it is. Yeah, it's a, uh, uh, that stuff is, how big of a piece is it, real quick? Yeah, uh, 14 a square foot is what cowhide's going for. So, uh, what about making a wallet out of it? Or a purse? Uh, and I'm not in a hurry, so I'm just going to get it. This is the actual piece that we saw that, um, that started it all. Inspired us, yeah. It's got the black uh, yeah, background. Smaller side, a little bit. I was out that's about what it's going to look like. Then. Which and is that's like the most uh, common size, and that's what they're always know, out of. Looks quite a bit different than what we got back here. here. But that's when it's all been antiqued and black. So we're going to leap ahead a little bit and show you the actual finished product. Uh, this is the beautiful leather work that Finn created. There's the door panel. This right here is an actual buffalo tail. It's hanging down and then the uh, Pendleton wool rug is at the bottom of the door and at the back of the kick panels and then you'll notice the main feature is this longhorn skull that's been uh, carved like that and also there is the air conditioning heater ducts so they're built into the, the horns of the uh, 
of it and uh, they work just like uh, they rotate and they fit right in there's the engine cover itself Let's see if I can get it a better angle inside the seats have uh, the FC Buffalo emblem and logo on them these are seats out of a BMW full power there's the gauge cluster over there air conditioning controls pretty different you can see the uh, brake lever it's got a antler from an elk on it this here is my uh, paperwork for driving the Jeep but it's also a uh, wireless charging unit for iPhones got the cup holders air conditioning and heater vents right here and then there's a close-up on the carving on the skull so to do this uh, part of this is metal and part of it is the original horn this is reinforced here because uh, we're going to be using this to help get into the unit. It's uh, screwed down here and it's also reinforced back here. Pretty proud of it. I think it turned out really well. 